this video I am going to be talking about the Jungian concept of archetype and Dawkins concept of me. On the surface they come across as very similar but what I will do is outline their differences. I will also critique meme theory and show ways in how it can be improved as a concept from my own opinion. Carl Jung's theory of archetypes are internal unconscious psychic structures that are common in all individuals. Jung identified these psychic structures in his study of religious and mythological symbolism, from the ancient and old, but also within present cultures, and how they represent similar patterns and themes. Jung did not see the psyche as being completely dependent on personal experience, but that it also contained elements of collectivized pre-personal experience. These, thus being the archetypes as they are common in all others, therefore residing in the collective unconscious of our psyche. Jung said the following, I quote, from the unconscious, there emanate determining influences, which independently of tradition guarantee in every single individual a similarity and even a sameness in experience, and also the way it is represented imaginatively." End quote. With this said, it is made clear that archetypes cannot be directly observed as they reside in the collective unconscious, but only through the formations that they produce within consciousness can this existence be seen thus through symbolic imagery and the psychic patterns of existence that they represent, such as for more modern purposes, particular characters in films that represent the hero, for example. Jung suggested many different archetypes crossing human behaviour and instinct, but the four main universals he suggested are the self, the shadow, the anima animus, and the persona. But archetypes also branch out into further specifics, such as the trickster, the wise old man, etc. Jung also coined the idea of archetypes having a evolutionary basis. I quote, Man possesses many things which he has never acquired, but inherited from his ancestors. He is not born as a tabula rasa, he is merely born unconscious, but he brings with him systems that are organised and ready to function in a specifically human way, and these he owes to millions of years of human development. End quote. So with this brief yet detailed description of the archetype, we need to understand specific key components to allow for the comparison with Richard Dawkins' theory of the meme. So with that said, here are the fundamental concepts of the archetype. One, they are fundamentally unconscious. Two, archetypes are not specific motifs. Those motifs are just conscious representations of an archetype which cannot be inherited. Three, they have an evolutionary basis, in that they are passed down over centuries in a collective vat due to behavioural action. And four, they are pre-structured behaviours that can be represented through symbolism, myth, art, story, etc. Now let's compare this to Dawkins' concept of meme from his book The Selfish Gene and see why people get confused between the two. He sums it up in one word, culture, and that it is the new form of replicators similar to the gene. He says that cultural transmission of the meme is analogous to genetic transmission and that through this it can have the ability to give rise to a form of evolution in a cultural sense. He claims it is predominantly our species that can really represent the capabilities of cultural evolution through the use of memes, for example, by looking at how memes develop cultural traditions such as language, ceremonies, customs, art, architecture, engineering and technology, which as elements of culture have evolved over time being similar to a form of speeded up genetic evolution. He says in the book that the way that these memes propagate is through imitation. Examples of memes would be tunes, ideas, catchphrases, ways of making particular things, etc. And that they are propagated through imitation by leaping from brain to brain. He uses the idea of a meme with the analogy of a virus. I quote, When you plant a fertile meme in my mind, you literally parasitize my brain, turning it into a vehicle for the meme's propagation in just the way that a virus parasitizes the genetic mechanisms of a host cell. He then goes further on explaining that you have meme complexes like religion and how there are co-adapting memes that support each other but all associate to a fundamental principle. For example, in the book he talks about the religious meme complex and the memes within it. As I quote, he writes, Perhaps we could regard an organised church with its architecture, rituals, laws, music, art and written tradition as a co-adapting stable set of mutually assisting memes, end quote. He also says that memes are unconscious, as in they are not purposeful acting agents, but this is not similar to Jung's idea of archetypes being unconscious. Archetypes are within your collective unconscious because they have a purpose, that's why they are there in the first place, and they have become ingrained within you due to evolutionary progression, so the archetypes themselves have an aspect of utility and purpose that is essential for human existence, 
and its propagation from an evolutionary perspective, hence why they have, over time, become pre-structured in the brain, let's say. With that said, there is actually some really interesting neuroscientific evidence that may be supportive for the existence of archetypes that I will probably go over in another video. Furthermore, you could maybe say with a touch of romantic linguistic flair that archetypes are the gods within you, which is an interesting idea to think about because it is probably why the Greeks had different gods such as Athena, the god of wisdom, being the same as the wise old man archetype. I'm not sure, but I think Jung said something about gods and archetypes in one of his books. So you can see that there is some strict differences between the two theories, even when at first glance they come across as very similar. But when you compare meme theory with archetype theory, they both stand well for their relative differences as concepts, but the idea of the meme, you could say, is not as sophisticated. I'm presuming from reading the book that Dawkins at the time hadn't touched on any of Jung's writings at all because, essentially, I see the archetype as being a meta-meme, because it's far more reaching and deeper, and because of that, maybe the connection could be made that the meme is the product of the archetype. I'd also dare to say that due to Dawkins' materialistic worldview, he unintentionally gives trivial reasons for the purpose of why particular memes are so highly imitative, and that's how the concept of archetypes could better validate why some are more imitative than others. Now to better demonstrate this claim is to give an example in the book, which he called the meme complex of religion, like the style of a particular architectural design, let's say in a religious cathedral or a style of painting in a church. You'd notice in an orthodox church or other branches in a particular religion that the painting styles and symbols used are always very similar to each other and in other churches. He would say that these paintings and religious architectural designs are just memes that are imitated within the artistic niche of that religious meme complex via natural selection within a culture. But it would be more than just cultural natural selection. Archetypes work within symbols, which are the a priori cause for imitation of that religious art created, and those symbols represent something far more complex than just memes, but a biological pre-structure within the collective unconscious of the psyche that is to consciously symbolise the evolutionary significance of that archetype within that particular piece of religious art. And the reason for its imitation and so-called catchiness is because of the ethic or value that the archetype is self-perpetuating within the medium of culture it is in. For example, the mother archetype in a Mary Magdalene child painting, a hymn or the symbols used around a church which represent archetypes of psychological importance towards death and rebirth, the hero, resurrection, etc. Jordan Peterson even gives a good example of the archetypal structure of dominance in relation to social hierarchies and how that the ethic of the logos in Christianity, for example, allows for the individual to develop a value system which will grant them the ability to climb up the dominance hierarchy and reach success, which is another example after my own that I came across in the making of this video, which adds to the idea that the archetypal structures are an extremely significant addition to the concept of the purpose of such memes and or meme complexes and why specific ones have such a significant survival value, and how it could be possible that the evolutionary aspect is also co-dominant with the archetypal aspect, which is something Dawkins doesn't mention in his book. It is a shame Dawkins never wrote another book on the development of this concept in relation to culture, because it is definitely worthy of further analysis, but it is also probably because his main incentive behind the meme concept was to pair it with the gene, and that there is another form of replicator that we have evolved to facilitate. So I hope this made sense. I find these two concepts hard to compare due to both their evolutionary significance and how archetypes represent a paradox between that and of the platonic forms, which is in itself a metaphysical quandary, but nonetheless, I think it is still worth the conversation. With that said, I'm going to do another video on this or a part two, which will be about why John Peterson doesn't like the concept and why he claims it to be a very shallow version of archetypes. I will also go over a debate he had with Susan Blackmore on the meme topic. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe for more content on philosophy and psychology. Thanks for watching.